Team Junkyard Dog here today, and we're going to be building our one pound horizontal kit, the scaler kit from Repeat Robotics. How cool is that? Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring the camera down to the desk and we're going to do a step by step guide on how to build your one pound horizontal ant weight robot. So, without any further delay, let's get to step one. Okay, so step one, you're going to take your weapon motor. And you're going to take this little pulley right here. This is what it looks like. It has a set screw on this side and a set screw on this side. You're going to take this nut off. You're going to make sure that the flange side is facing up and you're going to press this down. Firm press to get it to go all the way down. Then once it's down, we're going to need some Loctite. Use blue Loctite. You don't want to fight the battle of red. Dab will do ya. And let's install number one. We'll take this other one out from the other side. A little dab. There you go. And then after that's done, you're going to take the little nut here and you're just going to screw it down on top just like so. And it is a lock nut. So you are going to have to tighten that thing up. Just like so. And that is your first step. Okay, so for step two, we're going to attach this to our chassis plate. And you're going to pick the plate that has the motor mount side. It looks like a little star here. You have a big inner circle and four outer circles. And that pattern is going to line up with these right here. This is the common 16 by 9 millimeter uh, bolting pattern and you're going to try to point your wires towards the back because they're going to go into the chassis here through this little hole right there. So you want them to kind of angle to the side just like that. So we're going to take our motor mount screws. I'm assuming they are these uh, little silver ones. A little dab of Loctite. Anytime you're going metal on metal, you want to add Loctite. I have my screw poking out right here. And just get them started. Don't tighten them down until you get all four in. Then once you have all four in, you can go ahead and tighten them down. And we're going to say that step two is complete. Okay, so for step three, we're going to install the shaft for the weapon pulley. And it's going to go on the front up here in front of your motor. And you're going to use one of these nice beefy screws like this. And because it's metal on metal, we are going to be using Loctite. So we'll dab a little on there. Come up through the bottom of the chassis. Try to turn this to where you can see it. Just like so. We'll just screw this on. And give it a nice twist. Get it as tight as you can get it. On to the next step. Okay, so step four. And these are not the official steps. This is just the steps that, as I'm calling them, as I'm doing it. I am following uh, Repeat Robotics instructions on how to do this. But I'm just uh, doing it in my own steps. So step four. Get your weapon motor or your weapon hub. It's the big chunky gold piece with two ball bearings on the inside. And you're going to get your weapon blade. Now, if you have the, the one-sided blade like this one, if you need to think about uh, which way you want your blade to spin. The flat spot is the top. The blade will attach to the bottom. And so you need to turn this this way and determine do you want to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you want to spin counterclockwise, you flip your blade this way. If you want it to spin clockwise, you, spin, you place it this way. And you want the teeth pointing the direction that it's going to be spinning. I'm going to go with clockwise. For step four, you're going to take your weapon blade and you're going to mount it on top just like this. And then we're going to take these four longer screws right here and add a little Loctite. And we're going to drop them in here.
You want these tight. And I would I would suggest doing a a cross pattern. So you'd go one, two, three, four. That's just to make sure everything torques down nice and evenly. And that step is complete. Okay, so off to step number five. You're going to install your thrust bearing here. And you're going to drop a washer on top of the shaft. Then you're going to drop your bearing. Then you're going to drop another washer. Then you're going to drop on your weapon hub assembly. And then put another washer on. And now we're going to install our belt. And I'm just going to hook it on to the motor side first and then hook it like this and just kind of spin it on just like so. And that is the end of step five. Okay, so we're starting off with step number six. And we're going to take the chassis and you're going to get your little aluminum standoffs that came in the kit. And you're just going to press them in to the TPU. or press them into your chassis. Maybe some people would try other materials other than TPU, but I would recommend sticking with TPU. Okay, so once you press your inserts in, you're gonna bring in your assembly, and you're gonna take your wires and guide them through this hole. There you go. And drop this right on top. Now you can see why wire orientation was important on the weapon motor. And then once you get that on, we're going to hold it on and flip it over. And we're going to start dropping in our screws. like that. Flip her back over and that step is done. Okay so before we continue this is your base chassis. It's pretty much done. At this point we're going to start adding drive motors and electronics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to solder up our drive motors and our ESCs before we continue. That way we can just up uh, pop all of our components in and then we're good to go. But as far as the base chassis goes, that's all you need to do. All right, so we have our ESC. This is our drive ESC. It is a brush ESC. You have dual motors out, so you will be soldering or using connectors to connect to your motors. And the way I do it is on one side, I have red on positive, black on negative. Then on the other side, I'll put red on negative and black on positive, just because of the direction that you want your motors to turn. Normally I would use connectors, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and solder these on and I'll just do my connectors later. So I already connected this side up. I have not soldered it yet. And then this is my positive terminal. This is my negative. So I'm going to connect this up right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the red and the negative. I like to kind of hook it on there. And then this one's too fat. So I'm going to have to solder that one separately. But I'm going to get these soldered on first. And this section of the video is dedicated to red wire robotics. Chris, I know you love my soldering. So I'm going to dedicate this part to you. It might not be pretty, but it doesn't come undone. Trying to solder behind a camera takes it to a whole nother level. But you got to be quick with these connectors when soldering. You don't want to get them so hot that you ruin the motor. Okay, I like sticking the wire through there, but we can see that's not going to be happening for the rest of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to tin our tabs. Our actual wires are already tinned, so now we're just going to go ahead and hold these in place and solder them on. And just like that, we have 
our motor wires all soldered on and ready to be installed in our chassis. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and solder our weapon motor to our ESC right here. And this is the 35 amp ESC. And as before, we need to tin the board. Normally I would use bullet connectors for this, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to just be soldering everything. And the, the thing about when you hook this up is the, when you put these three wires on this board, it's gonna determine which direction your weapon motor spins. So if you've decided to go clockwise, you hook this up and you do your test and it spins counterclockwise, then you need to pull this out and just flip two of the wires. Any two. And if you're smart, which I don't think I am, you could add heat shrink at this point to keep these wires or remove any possibility of these wires coming in contact with each other. And there we go. The weapon ESC is now soldered up. All right, now that I have the solder joints finished. Your weapon ESC is gonna come with this piece of heat shrink. Make sure you slide that over your board to keep your board from touching and shorting out other components inside your robot once you pack all your stuff in there. There you go. Okay, so even though we did uh, wire up these motors and this, I'm not considering those steps into actually just building the bot. So now we're on to step number seven, and that's installing your drive motors. Now the way that these install, you have your hole on the side right here where they come out. These are press fit. So you wanna turn your can, you have the two flat sides. You want the flat sides side to side, and you want the rounded parts up and down. And you're going to angle this and go through the hole, just like this. And then once you get that in, mind your wires, and you're gonna just press this in. And make sure that the little bushing, make sure that the bushing on the end does come through the hole. So I've found that if I grab the shaft and kind of wiggle it and pull it through, you can get it seated in there pretty well. And you can see that that one's in. And now we're gonna take the other one, repeat the process, they are both now installed in there. Make sure your wires are running out through the little channels. Making sure my wires are all still connected. Because you want to make sure you push those all the way out before you press them down because you don't want your motor tabs to get caught on the chassis. So with those pushed down, now you're going to take your little motor covers and push these in place, just like so. And that will be the end of step number seven. Okay, so now we're going into step number eight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tuck these electronics in here because at this point with your electronics, that's all that comes with the kit. So you'll have to make your choice on battery size and receiver type and all that good stuff. We're just going to finish assembling the actual bot itself. So I'm just gonna tuck those in here for now. Now we're going to go ahead and finish installing the thrust bearing. And I talked with Peter about the grease on this, and he says he hasn't greased them yet, but it wouldn't hurt if you wanted to. And so since I did, I was an industrial mechanic for many years, I just tend to grease anytime there's metal on metal on anything. But don't go heavy, you just need just a little bit. If you put too much, you're gonna have grease slinging all over the arena and all over your bot. You just wanna put a little dab on there and we're gonna install the washer on top of that. And then you're gonna take your top chassis plate and you're gonna bring it down on top and then you're going to take the large screw. You are going to Loctite it, so I'm gonna dab it up and then we're gonna install it up here. Now when you tighten this up for the final time, you don't wanna go crazy tightening it down. You don't wanna bind up your weapon. So just kinda of go off feel. It's alright if it has a little bit of resistance, but you don't want to crank on it. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to get one of these right here. You only have five screws remaining at this point, and we're going to drop one in back here. Just like so. 
and that will be the end of step eight. So for the next step, step number nine, we're going to be installing a couple uh, wheel hubs and a couple tires. And the way that we're going to do this is you have a set screw on the side. You're going to make sure that's loose. Turn your shaft to your motor to where the flat side is up. It is a D shaft. And you want that set screw in alignment or on top of the flat spot. And you're just going to slide that on. Don't slam it up against the robot. Leave a small gap. And sometimes the foam tires will overlap the hub just a little bit. So make sure you have enough space for clearance. So that's one. Do the same thing on this side. Now what you want to notice about these hubs is they have double set screws. You have one on each side. So make sure that you tighten up all four set screws. There's no worse feeling in the world than you go out for your first match and your wheel falls off before you even get a chance. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, so now that we have those installed, we're going to be using some foam tires. They're 1.75 inch by 0.75, and we're going to remove the end caps off of these. It's just two screws. You're going to take your foam tire, and you're going to, you can see the comparison here, and you're going to have to just stretch it up over and slide it on. You want that nice, tight, fit and then once you've done that we're going to reinstall our cover make sure they're tight but don't go crazy you don't want to strip them out and then once you've installed that cover spin your wheel and make sure it's not rubbing your chassis we'll go ahead and do the other side real fast check it out and our wheels and hubs are now installed. All right, our final step to assembling this robot, and that is you take your top plate and you drop it on top, and then you're gonna take your four remaining screws and screw on your top plate. And there you have it. Your robot chassis is complete. And there you have it, guys, a super simple little kit to put together but it's extremely effective and if you don't believe me look at this real quick wow what a hit that was right pretty impressive that doesn't motivate you and to show you that this little guy can hammer another bot then probably nothing will so I'm looking forward to fighting this. The next video that I make on this little series will be me actually competing this at Megacon. And that's February 1st through 4th. And I'm gonna put this guy through his paces and I'm gonna vlog the experience. Now I don't have a lot of backup parts for it, but that's not this robot's fault, that's my fault. So I will try to get some more backups so I don't make sure I don't run out of spares. And maybe I can take this little guy all the way to first. If you know me in the past, my one pound horizontal has always been called Tyrone. And so he's gonna fight under the name Tyrone. So make sure you come back to see the fights, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. We're Team Junkyard Dog, and we're out.